What's up guys, Ebert here with Hardware Connects. Pardon me for my voice, I'm still recovering from a cold that I caught at Computex. But nonetheless, three months ago, at GDC, Google unveiled Project Stadia, a new streaming gaming platform that could potentially revolutionize the way how we think of gaming in the future. Now, Stadia is all about giving access or instant access to everyone who just want to get into the whole gaming field and experience the best of what they can, especially share their experience and of course, get together as a community and uh, not worry about uh, dealing with you know hardware requirements or whatnot. It's certainly, it's a different approach to gaming for sure. Now today, Google actually unveiled pricing and availability for Stadia. So here's everything that you need to know about Stadia. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. The new Be Quiet Dark Rock Slim Cooler offers high physical clearance for any memory module thanks to its slim heatsink and the low profile 120mm airflow optimized fan, so you get great cooling, low noise, easy installation, and no issues for high profile RAM. Check it out below. All right, so let's get to what exactly Stadia is. And I'm sure most of you are aware of it, but just for those of you who are wondering, it's essentially a cloud-based platform uh, that allows users to stream any game at any time uh, on any screen, wherever they are. And given how Google has entered this new game streaming service, it's supposed to work efficiently with other Google services like YouTube. You see, one of the biggest trends these days is game streaming. A lot of people love watching their streamers play their favorite games on YouTube or other platforms like Twitch. So with Stadia, it actually gives users the ability to stream any game anywhere on any screen. So for instance, if you're watching someone stream Assassin's Creed Odyssey or Metro Exodus on YouTube, Stadia will actually allow or give you an extra option where you can play that particular game with a matter of seconds. So you don't have to worry about any hardware requirements. Everything is based off Google's data centers. So there is no installs, no downloads of patch or whatnot. You don't have to download a 50 or 60 gigabyte folder on your system uh, to get this thing up and running. It's just, you know, simply click a button and you're instantly in the game in your world doing your own thing. Not to mention Stadia will give users the option to stream their particular gameplay on the platform. So for instance, if I wanna hop into a gameplay and if I wanna stream my gameplay on YouTube, I could do that simultaneously without having to worry about a separate streaming machine uh, and the hardware requirements for that or fiddling out with OBS or, or other you know services. It's genuinely really, really exciting. Now there are certain requirements for Stadia and that primarily revolves around your internet connection. So they claim that you can stream up to 4K at 60 frames per second in HDR with surround sound as long as you have a 35 megabits per second uh, internet connection. But if you have something in the lower 10 or 20, you can stream up to 720p at 60 frames per second in stereo sound. The other requirement is that if you're on a PC or a notebook, you just need to have Chrome installed on that and you'll be able to hop into this whole new platform right away. Uh, if you're on Chromebook or Chrome OS, it's the same story. As long as you have the Chrome browser, you're good to go. And especially for those of you who are, have a Pixel 3 or Pixel 3a, uh, the Google Stadia app will natively support those devices at launch, and Google will be planning on adding or supporting other devices later on. Now let's talk about the Stadia controller. It comes in a few colors, including clearly white, just black, and wasabi. That's right, my friends. Google's naming scheme is quite interesting actually. There's also a limited edition night blue variant that's only available to users who've bought the Founders Edition and I'll get to that in a minute. The control itself is pretty straightforward. It uses Wi-Fi to connect directly to the game running in the data center to get you the best experience. There are certain buttons conveniently located on the controller for instant capture, saving and sharing your gameplay and it also comes with a Google Assistant button as well. Stadia also supports Xbox One and PS4 controllers and a standard mouse and keyboard input as well, which is awesome. I should also mention that if you want to experience Stadia in your living room, say for instance your TV, you can just plug in the Chromecast Ultra module to the TV and uh, set up Stadia that way. Moving on to game support, and this is, this is a big one. You see, at launch, you'll have access to the newly announced Baldur's Gate 3, uh, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, The Division 2, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Mortal Kombat 11, Grid Autosport, NBA 2K, Metro Exodus, Doom Eternal, and more. Google has promised to expand the game library moving forward, and their partnership with EA and Ubisoft could mean that Stadia could be the ultimate game streaming platform, and I can't wait to see what they could come up with or what they would turn out to be in the next five years. Now, with all of that being said, we have to take a look at the competition, because the one thing that does come to my mind is NVIDIA's GeForce Now, which Weirdly enough, is still in beta mode, so the users would have to access or request for access to their beta program. 
And while the library is fairly vast, it's mostly Steam-related games and nothing more than that. So this is certainly an interesting take around with Stadia. They're definitely partnering up with a lot of these developers around the world uh, to bring most or the best of the games as possible as they can uh, to a lot of the users. All right, so let's get on to pricing and availability. Starting off with Stadia Pro, which is a $10 per month subscription fee, and that gets you the highest streaming quality up to 4K at 60 frames per second in HDR with 5.1 surround sound. You get unlimited access to free games starting with the entire collection of Destiny 2. There's also Stadia Founders Edition. Founders Edition, that actually is quite interesting. I've heard of that name before, Founders Edition. Oh, NVIDIA. That, that certainly rings a bell. It certainly does. But anyways, it's $130 US or $170 Canadian. And think of it as a bundle or a starter pack for users who really want to get into this whole uh, or get to experience Stadia at first, or they want to get their hands on as early as possible. So it comes in as a bundle, and what you're getting is a Chromecast Ultra module, along with a limited edition Night Blue Stadia controller. You also get three months of a Stadia Pro subscription, as well as an exclusive Stadia name, which means that as long as you hop into the platform, you get to claim a name uh, for yourself, and that's pretty cool. Uh, there's also a three-month buddy pass, so you can gift Stadia Pro access to a friend or family member for three months at no cost. Also, you can purchase an additional Stadia controller for around $70 US or $90 Canadian. And you can pre-order the Founders Edition right now, and Google did mention that it is only for a limited time and only in limited quantities, so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, you know, when it's going to run out. I certainly have placed my pre-order for sure because I really want to get my hands on this and share my experience with you guys as soon as I get my hands on this. So definitely stay tuned for that. There's also Stadia Base, which is a free service and it allows users to stream up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. And you can buy and keep the games you want and stream them wherever you are. Now, there are some things to consider. Stadia Base is only going to come next year. So if you really want to experience it right away, you're actually better off uh, you know, going for the premium subscription fee, which is the $10 per month option with Stadia Pro or the Stadia Founders Edition that comes with the bundle pack. The other thing that Google really didn't get into is accessibility and availability with Stadia Pro and Stadia Base. You see, even though that you can access some of these games anywhere you are, it looks like Stadia is going to be a combination of a game store as well as being able to play some of these games. But at the same time, you're going to have to buy some of these games with your own money uh, in order to access it from any device. So it looks like you might have to pay the full premium price for a game on Stadia Base, whereas with Stadia Pro, you'd get some discounts with some of these games that roll out later on. Uh, plus, it looks like a lot of these game libraries will be exclusive to Stadia Pro, whereas Stadia Base, it'll take some more time uh, to get access uh, to those titles. Stadia will be launching this November in 14 countries, including US, Canada, the UK, and of course the list that you see over here. Google is planning on expanding that as time goes on, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see how this all plays out uh, in the next few years. Now, what's really interesting is that Google has actually integrated AMD Radeon GPUs into their data center, and they've also included developer tools to create the foundation of Stadia. So it looks like they do have the hardware to back it up because they're using second generation HBM2 memory to provide fast and predictable performance. It also features error correcting code to ensure protection is key. But my biggest concern is obviously gonna be latency. And I'm sure a lot of you guys would agree with me on that as well, because in the past, I've tried a lot of these streaming services and they weren't really that great, particularly with Nvidia and GameStream. I mean, I've tried streaming a game from my PC to the Shield over my Wi-Fi network and it wasn't really that great. Uh, we've also tried AMD's game streaming service. Uh, actually, I'll leave a link to that video right over here where you can watch our experience going through that setup. And you know, it worked 70% of the time, latency was still present, it wasn't really perfect. So like I said, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what uh, Stadia has to offer. And I can't wait to get my hands on this and share my experience with you guys. But let me know what you guys think about Stadia. Is it something that uh, you know you would consider trying out yourself? Uh, but at the same time, you know, do you think Stadia is the future of gaming? Now, if it turns out to be successful, it could also be a little bit of a problem as well because you know uh, it will be difficult for gaming brands to start promoting their products for certain things because you know if if latency is not even an issue, if it doesn't even exist with Stadia, things could just turn a whole new way, a complete complete degree. It could take a complete turn 
uh, in the whole industry. So, yeah, I, I guess we're just going to wait and see. Let me know what you guys think about Stadia in the comments down below. I'm Ivo with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out some relevant content over here. Subscribe to our Boot Sequence channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I gotta go. Uh, I think I have to go drink some hot tea or something because my throat is. My voice is busted. <laughs>